Just west of Colorado Springs at the foot of Pikes Peak is the quirky mountain town of Manitou Springs. It sits at 6,414 feet in elevation at the foothills of the Rockies and has some really engaging history and fun attractions. The town was originally founded in the 1870s and many of the old 1900s buildings and homes in the city are still standing, which gives the town an old historic feel. Today, the town of Manitou Springs is best known for its small town feel, quirky mom and pop shops, unique restaurants, pubs, and parks. Here are some of the top things to do and our favorite places to see in Manitou Springs, Colorado. Unique shopping on Main Street. Manitou Springs is a small town of just 5,283 residents. Being nestled in a valley at the base of the Rocky Mountains doesn't give the town much space to spread out and it kind of adds to this village feel. The best way to get around Manitou is on foot and there is a lot to see as you trek through town. And the amount of history that is jammed into this small town is astonishing. From the old 1800s architecture of the buildings that remain, to the vintage arcade, all the way to the local boutiques and shops. And even in more recent noons, back in the 60s and 70s, Manitou Springs became known as a hippie haven, and to this day, that hippie attitude and lifestyle is still strong and well in the city. The shops and overall vibe of the town really reflect that. No shirt, no shoes, no problem is kind of the motto. The bulk of Manitou Springs storefronts are actually homegrown gift shops, exotic, authentic artifacts from the Far East, those quaint mom and pop sort of shops that you'll see in every sort of small town. Some of mine and Carrie's favorites are Salas, Lahena Bahim, and any of the local art stores or souvenir shops. Another thing we love is the Mineral Springs walking tour. Believe it or not, the springs in Manitou Springs actually refers to the natural spring water that comes out of the ground in the area. Unlike Colorado Springs, which doesn't actually have any natural spring water, anywhere. And since the founding of the town, the spring water has been called a natural healing tonic. Long before the town was founded, the Ute Indians, who once inhabited much of Colorado, would visit the Manitou Springs area to rest and heal by the natural springs. And these days, the city features a fun and free walking tour of the eight different mineral springs nearby. You can start your free tour by going to the Manitou Springs Chamber of Commerce for more info. Here you will receive a free cup to taste the mineral water along your tour and get a map of where all the springs are located. Each spring has a different mineral content and natural carbonation, so it has a slightly different taste. While this may sound like a really interesting tour, the reality really is that most people think the different springs water tastes gross. It's not like drinking a refreshing ice cold glass of filtered water because all the minerals and the stuff in there really give it its taste. Some of the springs will taste like you're licking a railroad spike because of all the iron and the copper content inside of it, and the other ones will taste like flat seltzer water. But each of the springs has a little bit of like that bubbly effervescence, uh, so it's not gross by any means, but it's certainly palatable. Carrie hates it. She did it once. She's like, I'm never doing it again. It's really but strong then, and unique if you're not used to it. But then there's those people who live there uh, and they walk around with 25 gallon bottles and they will sit there for 15 minutes and fill it up. But the one thing that you can be sure of is that whether you're a local or you're just passing through, standing at any of these fountains and watching somebody try it for the first time is always worth it. You'll see them either love it or hate it, because that's usually how it is. This water is a love it or hate it thing. It's not a, I'll come around to liking it eventually. And fun fact, due to the various mineral contents, doctors in the area once prescribed these spring waters for patients for any number of ailments. And before the town was even, you know, founded in the sense that it is, the Utes had been coming to this area and healing and recuperating with these mineral springs themselves. So after you're drinking from the Fountain of Youth that is the Mineral Springs, try to go for the exact opposite, Patsy's Chocolates and Gift Shop. Patsy's Chocolate and Gift Shop is the only open air concession stand in all of Colorado that is permanently open, and it's been famous since 1903. They have fantastic gourmet popcorn where you can literally you'll get a bag the size of like a bean bag, and definitely make sure to try out their saltwater taffy, it is some of the best you'll ever find. Patsy's offers what I would classify as that like quintessential carny food, the kind of stuff that you can walk around with and really like eat with your hands. Like I said, popcorn, there's big pretzels, ice cream, hot dogs, funnel cakes, all those things that really add to the experience and add to the walkability of this town. But this is the best place if you are looking for an overly sweetened treat or delicious indulgent deep fried food. Another one of our favorites is the Manitou Springs Penny Arcade. You can play hundreds of old arcade games here. And this arcade features rides, prizes, new and old games, pinball, skee-ball, pool, and air hockey games. And by old games, we're talking about games from the 1930s, but there are also brand new ultra-modern games here as well. 
A real grab bag of variety here, but one that every generation can enjoy and take a nostalgic trip. Something else that makes this arcade unique is the fact that a large portion of it is outside. The small coin-operated rides and many iconic arcade games are out in the open air, albeit they're covered. Many of the more modern or delicate games like pinball are inside one of the many buildings to protect them from the elements. And I'm sure many modern parents have yelled at their kids to stop playing video games and go outside. Well, this is the great place that you can actually go and do both. This is a bit of Manitou Springs blast from the past for longtime residents of Colorado and anybody who loves to hear those pinball flappers clacking. And the Penny in Penny Arcade? Well, that is indeed true. Many of the older games can only be played with some of the smaller currencies, aka pennies, nickels, and dimes. And if the game cost a penny back in the 50s, it's only a penny now. All of the colorful characters and all of the people that pass through makes this a wonderful place to sit and people watch. And also all the kids running around going ballistic, hyped up on sugar, everything. Needless to say, the arcade is always buzzing with activity. Manitou Springs Parks and Fountain Creek. Near one of the main parking lots is a very nice public park. It's located off the main street and is right across from the small 7-Minute Spring Park, which is one of the many springs the city is named for. Across from the 7-Minute Spring Park is Memorial Park, which features a nice kids' playground and picnic tables. The bus stop on the east side of the park along Old Man's Trail, which is the main bus to ride when climbing the Manitou Incline. Fountain Creek runs through the city, and there is virtually nowhere in the town center you can't hear the babbling of this brook year-round. During the warmer months, adults and kids can be found playing in the cool water, and there's something to be said about sitting outside in a restaurant on a warm sunny day and listening to the river flow by your feet. In addition to the smaller parks and creeks that run through Manitou Springs, the city also backs up to one of the largest parks in the entire country, Garden of the Gods. The Cliff House The Cliff House is an old hotel that has been accommodating guests longer than Colorado has been a state. It's become kind of a hallmark of Manitou Springs with all the old buildings and the Wild West heritage. Built in 1873, the Cliff House was originally called The Inn, and its fate has always been intertwined with the gold rushes in the area and later the healing properties of the spring waters themselves. In 1921, a flash flood washed through the hotel, which set it on a downward spiral of neglect and dilapidation. In the 80s, the Cliff House was turned into apartments, and soon after, there was a fire that nearly destroyed the entire estate. It remained vacant until 1997, when it was finally renovated. And since then, there's been millions of dollars poured into the Cliff House to resort to its once glorious status. These days, it serves as a hotel for guests seeking lodging or to host special events like weddings. Fine dining is available at the Cliff House restaurant and serves award-winning cuisine. And this is from the website. Stately and spellbinding, the Cliff House of Pikes Peak pairs the glamour of a bygone era with the modern day styles, sophistication, and service worthy of its triple A four diamond status, aka it's a nice hotel. And some of the most noteworthy people to have ever stayed or visited the Cliff House include President Theodore Roosevelt, Ferdinand, Crown Prince of Austria, whose assassination led to the events that began World War I, P.T. Barnum of Barnum & Bailey Circus, and America's greatest inventor, Thomas Edison. The Manitou Incline. The Incline at Manitou Springs is a popular hiking destination that brings people from all over the world who are seeking a true physical challenge. Now, this is not your typical tourist destination and should only be attempted if you're in really good physical shape. If you're susceptible to altitude sickness, we suggest skipping this in favor of less strenuous destinations. And I can personally say that it is something that you don't want to take lightly and you definitely want to plan for and train for if you're not ready. The Incline Trail follows an old three foot wide, narrow gauge railroad that was originally used to transport materials up and down the mountain for mining operations or pipelines. Later, it was turned into a tourist attraction to bring tourists up and down the mountainside, but that was closed in the late 50s. And in 1990, a rock slide damaged the tracks and left behind debris that scattered over the path. The tracks and debris from the rock slide were removed and it uncovered a staggering staircase from the remaining railroad ties. Now this is an extreme hike that climbs more than 2,000 feet in elevation and has more than 2,700 steps to climb. And to call this hike a challenge is an understatement. It is something that catches people off guard by how much of an undertaking it is to climb even just halfway. But the views from the top so far east that you feel like you can see all the way to Kansas make the journey worth it. Make sure to bring sunscreen and water. It's not like there's like, you know, a drinking fountain every couple hundred steps or something, no. And more water than you need to. Yeah. As when I was climbing the Manitou Incline, I took four water bottles and drank all of them. And lost one of them. And I lost one of them. One of the nice ones. Yeah. When planning your next visit to this historic, offbeat little town, we hope this gives you some ideas for activities to try. You really can't go wrong with a quirky Colorado town full of shops and restaurants surrounded by gorgeous Rocky Mountain views.
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to show your support. And to get new videos from us every week, be sure to hit that subscribe button.